All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome into Thursday. I hope you are doing great. This is a daily tarot reading for the collective. Couple of announcements. I am posting the November readings right now. Whichever zodiac sign gets the most likes, I'm going to do a bonus reading, maybe live. We'll see. Um, so if you want to catch up on your own zodiac sign, uh, there is a link below for those for a playlist. They're not all posted yet, but they will be by tomorrow. All right. And today, a couple of things going on today. We have the astrology group. I'm going to talk you through the astrology of November. If you haven't jumped on the astrology group to learn how to deal with your own astrology and surf the energies that are going on, that might be something interesting to you. So that's happening today. Also, later today, our first coaching session. For those of you who are opening up to your spiritual business and you want to have me give you feedback and talk through some of your issues, questions, concerns, and uh, be part of this small group coaching, um, jump on. This is last call. Okay. Last call. For the coaching group, the link is below. Okay, let's see where we're going here. Okay, we're in Scorpio time. Fair enough. The death card. Change, transformation. Oh, the message card. I really like that one. It's a 33 card and shift. Uh, so the message that's coming through in Scorpio time is it's time for a change. It's time to either really embrace who you are and who, what you have come here to do or who you are to be in your life. Um, that's a big message that's coming through. Also, uh, there can be some things that are about to change for you. And uh, that has been a big topic of conversation in all of these readings that I've done so far, and I've done most of them. So anyway, let's see what's coming out for this morning. Shift coming up. So in October, at the end of October, we do have um, the full moon in Taurus, and that is going to be a watershed moment for a lot of you. It's on October 28th, so uh, pay attention to what's going on in terms of your own risk versus security kind of polarity. Are you taking enough risk in order to create security in your life? Those things are not opposites. They work together. They work together. You're going to have to take some risk at some point in your life in order to create security for yourself. And some of you are experiencing that right now. So let's see what's going on. Uh, what wants to come through the reading? Eight of Cups, the cards underneath, what you're not seeing or what is going on um, subconsciously even. Four of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, Magician. Magician has been super busy lately. Um, the Hierophant and the Six of Swords. So there's a lot of transformation going on. A lot of uh, moving away from moving away from stuck energy, moving away from holding on to things that are too small for us, moving away from partnerships that don't work anymore, something like that. I feel like a lot of you have built something with another person or with a group of people and you're waking up in the middle of the night going, I know it's time for this to end. I know it's time for me to move on from this but I don't know how to tell these people or I don't know how to tell my partner. I don't know how to tell my parents. I don't know how to tell my best friend that I'm moving to another state or something like that. The Hierophant and the Magician. So this, the Taurus and Gemini. So this is about being able to, this is Mercury. So communication, manifesting what it is you truly want and feeling good about it. I think some of you are afraid to hurt other people's feelings or you're afraid of ending a situation, but you're getting the message right? That nine of swords, the message is coming through loud and clear time for a change. Okay. Time for a change time, time to shift into a new life pattern. So uh, a new job, a new career, a new way of doing life, you know, like, Oh, wow. I, you know, I took this job and six weeks in and I hate it. Right. Um, Oh, wow. We got married a couple of years ago. And what, a, what was I thinking? You know, that kind of stuff. This is like all the things that happen in, in Scorpio time, when you're really seeing who it, you really are, the veil is very thin. Okay. Five of swords, six of cups, nine of cups, four of cups, high priestess, right? Smack dab in the middle intuition, three of wands, the page of pentacles, the hanged man and the two of cups. 
Okay. Uh, some of you are dealing with a partner from the past. Some of you have um, maybe uh, blocked a person or, bl or um, run away from a relationship that was maybe in your childhood or in your, not in your childhood, but in your like young adulthood. Some of you may have found the right person <laughs> and you're like, this can't happen now. I got to I got to, you know, go out and see the world. I've got to, you know, um, <laughs> follow the circus. I've got to be traveling Europe. I've got to be skiing. I've got to be doing, you know, I've got to be doing things that are um, what I want to create. I want, you know, big energy. I want to be a digital nomad. I don't want to settle down. I don't want to deal with this. And some of you did the opposite where you're like internally, like, I really want to travel the world. I really want to be like a, a, you know, a travel journalist. I really want to, um, take part in, um, other cultures. I really want to very ninth house energy coming through here. Sagittarian time is, uh, the time of exploration and things like that. But no, I didn't do it. I became, I went back home and became my father or my mother or something like that. Like I didn't, I didn't strike out on my own when I had the chance out of guilt, out of shame, out of uh, feeling like I wasn't allowed to, out of feeling like this wasn't going to work out. And I was, you know, I was listening to all those voices in my head that were shaming me for something I really wanted to create, this Four of Cups. And so I think sometimes when we do that to ourselves, we compensate for it by doing little things secretly that are kind of like an F you to um, whatever voice was keeping us down. So there can be this kind of experience. A lot of third parties situations can come from a secret wish, a desire to be the person I really want to be, but I'm not, I don't have enough um, courage to really be that person, to really go for a relationship that is something maybe different than what other people are telling me I need to do. Or um, I want to I want to be a tarot reader on YouTube and, and, your, and your family or your friends may be putting you down for it. Or you may be um, not able to strike out on your own in terms of being an entrepreneur because people are telling you this is a terrible time to do it. Um, so whatever it is, it's coming from a long time ago, some kind of buried dream is trying to break through. And Scorpio time is a perfect time because the veil is very thin. And it is kind of like some kind of, you know, dream a little dream. What was it that was making you um, joyful? I feel like there, some of you sold yourself short. Some of you stopped yourself, stopped your progress because of the expectations of others. This is expectations, okay? Expectations. And instead, you've created something that maybe you feel is safe. But for someone who has a dream, creating something that they feel is safe, it's going to leak out in other ways. There's going to be manipulation, control, shame, games, third parties. It's going to leak out in other ways. And it's like... Can you just align with your true nature, this high priestess? High priestess is truly in alignment with her connection to the high self. When you're truly in alignment with that, that's when you hear intuition. When you're really being yourself and there's no like facade or pretense or uh, what other people want from me. So I'm trying to like, you know, live in this mask of who I was supposed to be, um, only when you're truly in alignment is your intuition strong and consistent and loud enough so that it's a recognizable voice. When you're jammed into being somebody else that other people wanted you to be, the intuition can come through. It can feel a little bit like this, like the five of swords. Like it's, it's not intuition really. It's the voices of other people of the past. It's the it's the shame, it's the guilt, it's the persecution even. Wow, that's a word. Um, or the missed opportunities or the sadness or the despair or the depression. 
This is all coming because people jam themselves into roles and life stories, life patterns, life paths that have nothing to do with what you're here to do. The only thing, well, I'm going to, I'm going to little asterisk. There is a lesson here in who you've jammed yourself into being. There is a lesson. Where did that come from? Where did that idea come from? That instead of being a dancer or being a, uh, you know, a violinist or being um, a female car mechanic or something that's like a little new wave, a little bit outside of the box, right? Where did the idea of the box come from? What was that? Where did that show up for you? And what were the, the sort of lessons and whispers and disappointments and disapprovals and any all kind of guardrails that kind of filtered you down into a situation that said, yes, this is what you should be. And have you ever given it any thought that there are people who are doing those guardrails who may have missed out on their own dreams. They could have some kind of jealousy if you're like really able to kind of and have aptitude for any of those things I mentioned or something really remarkable. Or being, it doesn't even have to have a job title. Let's, we don't have to do that. Our mission and purpose on this path doesn't have to have some kind of like, this is what it is. It's about a beingness. It's about a who I am embodying that is 100% aligned. That's when intuition flows. That's when the download flows. If we're spending so much time creating another person that other people will approve of, and then they don't even approve of it, Right. Like I definitely had uh, a friend, uh, a couple of friends who went down some paths of approval. I did it, too. And it really wasn't even approved of because it was more going on in those days or in those statements or in those disapprovals or in those kind of guardrails. There was a lot more going on. People who were also maybe wounded, who were seeing things there through their own lens of whatever it it's like people do the best they can, but most people do the best they can. But there is there is definitely a sense of here of like a magician and the hierophant, meaning this is like I'm going to create a facade. I'm going to create whatever uh, I need to do in order to look acceptable, okay, to polite society. Um, and I was just doing, was I doing the Aries reading, Aries or Pisces? I can't remember. But I was talking about uh, this really incredibly dark um, person. Uh, there's a there is a documentary about the life of Ted Bundy told. And if you don't know who that is, good. But like he's he's sociopath, psychopath, serial killer. And that person was showing himself to be this boy next door, this very handsome accomplished, well-spoken, soft-spoken, bow-tie-wearing, wannabe lawyer. And, oh, by the way, he's a killer, okay? And so it was told through the lens of his longtime girlfriend who lived lived with him. I don't know. I think they, I'm not sure. I don't think they did live together. I think that they were dating for like five years and then he took off to Utah and, and then things started really going downhill after that. But... Um, she even refused to kind of see who he was. And that's a person who let his shadow, who really pushed down um, a lot of who he was. And it erupted in a very violent, uh, terrible, terrifying way. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that uh, you are you are like that. I'm just saying that like when we don't really know who we are, things can get twisted. Things can get... Um, uh, perverted things can get in a bad way and it can it can really uh, become a, a toxicity and so how people deal with each other if they don't know who they are can be uh, through the lens of jealousy or anger or fear or toxicity of some kind so if, if you're kind of creating this persona and you're wondering why you can't get to your intuition 
it's because you're not really aligned with who you are. And I feel like in Scorpio time, we're getting a sense of like really becoming authentic people over the course of the age of Aquarius, which we will see the beginning of. Um, we are definitely in that place of true authenticity where intuition rules. Like if you are plugged into your intuition, you don't have any problem with narcissistic partners. You don't have any problem not knowing which direction you're going in for your love, for love or for money or for your career, anything like that. You're plugged in. Okay. And you're also very good at seeing liars and all those kind of toxicities that happen with people when they either don't know who they are or they agree to become a facade of someone that they believe will be acceptable to other people. And I just am getting the sense of like the final, the thing, like this is the past, five of swords, four of cups, page of pentacles is like, you know what? I'm really gonna learn about who I am Astrology helps you with that. Um, analysis therapy helps you with that. Uh, seeing a life full of patterns helps you with that. That's a lot of the stuff we do on this channel is about understanding yourself. Why do things happen like this? What, what are the energies that are going on around me that I'm, why do I act out this way? Why do I constantly attract third parties? Why do I always have narcissists in my life? Okay. Like these are the things that we're dealing with. And wouldn't it be great to make a conscious shift? Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. Cause a lot of you have said that you want to make a conscious shift. So what's happening right now, the six of cups, there can be, um, you know, a, sort of like going back to childhood and figuring out who you are. There can also be people in your life from your past past life connections, soulmate connections that you're going, oh, okay, I get it now. I get why these people are showing up in my life and I'm looking at things from a new perspective. I'm not taking things on face value. I'm not taking things for granted. I'm not just being like, well, my father was a dentist, so I'm a dentist. Maybe you're not a dentist. Especially if it makes you miserable. You're not a dentist then. Okay. So <laughs> that does remind me, is it, is it Frosty? No, it's R Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right? The, um, the kid, I want to be a dentist and he's a, he's an elf and, and he's a great dentist. He loves being a dentist. He doesn't want to be an elf. He doesn't want to be, well, he was an elf, but he doesn't want to be like a toy maker. So we're going from Ted Bundy to the elf and right. Okay. So, uh, the point of this is what's your dream? And expect it to come true when you are truly aligned with your intuition. Expect it. Expect it. It can't be any other way because when you're truly aligned with who you are, those are the opportunities that show up. Those are the people that show up. Two of Cups. This is a beautiful connection with the self. This can be the Two of Cups can be you having like this new kind of love affair because you've learned who you truly are and learned what it is that you want just from understanding that, wow, I've been living my life through the lens of somebody else's expectations. All right. I'm going to continue on with this reading. If this is your reading, I will pull cards for each Zodiac sign to give you some guidance. We'll look at the next 30 days and we'll see where we're going. Okay. Link is below pathfinders. We're just going to keep going. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.